Hey everyone, great to connect with you again today. So the weather on Sunday is a little bit iffy. Uh, right now we're planning to be outdoors, but we're going to keep an eye on it. If we need to move indoors, we'll communicate that decision through all the regular channels. Whatever the weather, we'll be indoors and streaming on this Sunday at 11 as usual. And in both services, I'll be preaching about the judgment of the cross from Philippians 3. As we continue our Easter preparations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in being baptized or even in renewing your baptismal vows on Easter Sunday morning, please contact me in the next week or so. I'll be arranging a preparatory class for all who desire to be baptized. You may or may not be aware, but last week was the beginning of the college basketball tournaments, both the men's and the women's. The first couple of days of each tournament are filled with games beginning around noon and ending well after midnight. 16 games each day. It's awesome. With all those games, there are always moments to stand out, like when an unexpected underdog upsets a team that many think could win the whole championship, or when the, the buzzer beater shot that creates instant heroes. And then there are those moments that almost overshadow the games themselves. One of those moments took place during the Indiana St. Mary's game. Barely a minute into the second half, one of the players took a shot, it bounced off the rim, went over the backboard, and landed behind the backboard. That's not all that unusual for a ball to bounce off the rim and go over the backboard. What was unusual this time is that the ball didn't come down. I don't think I'd ever seen that happen before, but the ball got stuck up in the metal arms that hold up the backboard and the shot clock. The game stopped while they tried to get the ball down. One tall player grabbed a mop and tried to poke at it, but he wasn't tall enough. A much shorter referee climbed a chair, but he couldn't reach it either. And as the minutes were ticking by, you could even watch it on TV, you could feel the crowd getting antsy. Everyone on the court was looking around trying to figure out what to do. When all of a sudden, you could hear a murmur begin to grow in the crowd. And then the camera turned to two Indiana cheerleaders. And the next thing you see is a male cheerleader holding up a female cheerleader while she stands on his hands. And they walk over to the backboard. She reaches out, picks up the ball, and tosses it down to the players below. The crowd erupted in cheers. Thousands of people on their feet roaring for these two cheerleaders. Listening to the television announcer, you would have thought that this cheerleader just hit the game-winning shot. And it didn't stop there. ESPN showed that the cheerleaders were interviewed on the Today Show. And just this week, I read that a t-shirt company has signed the female cheerleader to a deal to produce t-shirts with a picture of her reaching up to grab the ball and it says the cheerleader saves the day. Now, from my perspective, unfortunately, Indiana lost the game badly. An article the next day made the observation that these cheerleaders were the highlight of that game for every Indiana fan, and actually that was true. I've thought a lot about that incident over the past week or so. It was one of those unexpected moments when two people saw a problem and did something about it. Now, they didn't go to the arena that afternoon thinking about retrieving a basketball. They went to cheer on their team. They weren't on the sideline hoping to become famous. They were there to encourage the fans. But when a need arose, they, they got involved. In an odd kind of way, it makes me think of Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan didn't start on his journey looking all around for someone to help. That was probably the last thing on his mind. He was probably thinking about how dangerous the road is or, or the problems he was going to need to address when he returned from his trip. But when the need arose, he responded. And he responds because his heart is open to respond, because he's more interested in the needs of others than of himself. Even though to stop might put his own health at risk, even though to stop might make him late for an appointment, even though to stop, he does to do so is to help a sworn enemy. He stops anyway. Few of us wake up each morning planning to do something heroic. And then... That's probably okay. But to follow Jesus is to wake up with a willingness to see people in need and to help them to the best of our ability. It's to wake up every morning thinking, how can I be a presence for Jesus today? And often what we do is, is not really earth shattering. I suspect that more often than not, it looks less like saving someone's life and more like retrieving a basketball. But isn't this the point that Jesus makes in Matthew 25 when he says that giving a drink to those who are thirsty, giving food to those who are hungry, opening our homes to strangers who need a place to stay, providing clothing to those who don't have any, giving compassionate care to the sick and 
giving our time to those in prison? When Jesus speaks of these acts of kindness and selflessness, the people who do them and the people who don't do them are surprised that they matter so much to Jesus, that they are even connected to eternity. But they do, and they are. Despite what we often think, God doesn't necessarily call, call us to do what we often judge as great things. God calls us to be willing to do whatever he puts in front of us. Things that we call big, things that we call small. Whatever God asks of us, the things that will open people's eyes to the truth and the grace of Jesus, he's asking us, are you willing to do? Father, thank you for the privilege of being your agents of grace in a world so desperately in need of your grace. Make our hearts tender like Christ. Open our eyes to see like Christ. Give us courage to act and to speak like Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful day.